I'll figure it out as we go, Rich. No worries. So basically, <laughs> Reflection Artist Live episode number 71 with Rich Light from Glossit. Now, if most of you don't know Rich, he's been in the industry for over 32 years and he's been, you know, he started Glossit. He is the man of Glossit, the face of Glossit. And that is something that's been around for over 15 years now. So what we want to do is we want to dive in to the background of how Rich got started in this beautiful industry and from the inception of his early days, which has been a long time. He's been able to see the evolution of this industry and where it was once to where it is now. And we want to see that side of it and that journey of which Rich has contributed to our industry, along with how that journey looked for him which is obviously much different for everybody, but because he has so much grit in the game of, of the detail industry, he's come from a background that has really helped this industry evolve. So Rich, thank you for joining us and being on. And how did you dive into this wonder wor wonderful world of detailing? So guys, Justin, thank you for having me as a guest. I, I you know, look forward to this conversation. Um, as you mentioned, I've been in the business over three decades, right? Um, and I started with a passion for cars. You know, and uh, when I grew up out of Philadelphia, which was a suburb, it was called Westchester. My dad was an avid car collector and his buddies were avid car collectors. And I just liked cleaning cars as a kid. And my dad was a meticulous guy. And uh, I was so good at it as a kid that his buddies who had nice cars said, hey, how much would you charge me to do my car? And then so on and so on. And this was kind of like just like a part time thing. And then when I got into college, now, what, what did those services before college, what did those services look like in that time frame? I mean, what were I, I the basis of them? Basic, basic washing, waxing, polishing. You know, we, we refer it today as like mini detailing services. I wouldn't call it comprehensive, right? And so basically it was a journey because back then we didn't have the technology that, that we have today with the products and the equipment. I mean, things are really evolved. So, you know, it was very basic and... I just had this gratification because either I was landscaping as a kid, making some money as a kid, right? Or I was cleaning or detailing cars. And then when I get into college, uh, which was like 87, 88, um, I didn't want to get a part-time job. So I said to my professors, hey, you got a nice three series BMW. Why don't I clean her up? So you sold and, yourself at college to your professors. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And so I would be in the parking lot and I had a nice truck and they would always say to me, my teachers would say, your blazer, I had an 84 Chevy diesel blazer, looks like brand new. I said, no, it's got 200,000 miles on it. And then the next thing I knew it, I had all these teachers coming up to me in the school way saying, hey, I want my car done. And I'm like, hey, listen, I'm four weeks booked. It's going to be, you know, 300 bucks and it's going to take me a day. And so what was crazy was on the weekends, I would spend a Saturday and a Sunday and I'd make about a thousand bucks. And everybody else that I was going to school with was working full-time jobs. And I was working part-time just doing this, right? And so the story part, began- Part-time work, full-time pay? Yeah. So it's an interesting story because what happened was um, when I got out of school, um, I got a job in a company that sold fire equipment. And one of my customers' name was Frank, and he owned a car dealership called Granite Auto Sales in Quincy, Massachusetts. And- um, I was selling him equipment for his new car dealership and uh, the company went out of business. They, they just did some shady things and they went under very quickly. As I started, I was a sales manager. So I was getting a lot of sales experience. And then I said to Frank one day, he said, I said, you're not using the side of your dealership inside where you do the repair. Can I rent some space out? And he's like, why don't we split it? 60, 40, you give me 40 of every job. You keep 60%. You don't pay any rent. And this was in 1990. And I started hustling with Herb Chambers. Everybody knows Herb. He's big in the car business. He became a customer of mine. I was doing all the car dealerships in South Shore, which is like Brain Sheet, Cohasset, all these suburbs. So the next thing you know it, I got like four or five kids working for me and we're doing what's called recon, right? They didn't call it detailing. They called yeah. it recon, right? And so at 20 years old, I got four or five kids. Then I've got dealerships with kids inside of subcontractors. And I'm basically just hustling back and forth. And this is how I got into detail business. Well, remember, Frank was my partner and I had to give him 40%. So after a few years of breaking my, my butt, I said, hey, you know what? I think I want out. I want to do my own thing. And, and that was kind of like a sticky point in my life because I was tied to him. And so I eventually 93 broke out and uh, got a bigger shop, which was six bays in Quincy, Massachusetts. 
I'm going really fast with the story, but I started that journey and then I was still doing the car dealerships. And at that time, his name was Kevin. He worked for me. He was like my shop foreman and he was five years older than me. And I said, you know, I have an opportunity to move to Las Vegas and start another business doing this. Would you like to buy my business? And his parents took a second mortgage on their house and they bought Brandon Auto Grooming. Right. And I moved out in uh, 94 to Las Vegas, which is where I currently reside, uh, the Boston World Headquarters. And I started up a shop with no friends, no family, just straight hustle. Now, and at that time frame, in that mid 90s time frame with with getting into selling the business, what did that look like and, and how you and you don't I mean, again, however much information you want to put out there. But what did that look like of being able to scale that, understand what the value of it was and then. Did you get what you felt was worth it out of that business with what you built and put into it? Absolutely not. I think I undervalued myself because I didn't have enough experience to know any better, right? And I did it based on, I had a father who's an entrepreneur. He owned many, many businesses. He was the first auto parts store in North America and the first boss distributor. And he was busy doing his thing, living in Philadelphia area and I was in Boston. But um, I undervalued myself probably by a couple hundred thousand dollars because oh, the wow. business was worth quite a bit of money. Um, it gave me enough to transition to Las Vegas and rent space and start a shop and start to rebuild. But it certainly by any means wasn't what we would call wealthy or rich by any means, but it gave me a head start. Um, and that's when the journey of Boston started in the 90s in Las Vegas, when I started experimenting with different chemist blenders and having them make me product because I wasn't happy with what was on the market. If you know, Justin, you've been in this game a long time and you're an advanced instructor, you have a lot of knowledge. And so you understand that pattern product combinations are so important because they are variables to outcomes, right? And, but you know, what's funny is that business works the same way. You got to have different combinations, right? And so this is what we've been doing for the last probably four years is teaching you not just pattern product combinations, but teaching you skill sets and mindsets and how to look at things differently in marketing and sales and how to build teams, right? And so when we teach the parallel, the parable is here's your pattern product combination, but here's your combination for your business to scale, right? Yeah. And, and you kind of know this because you've grown quite a bit in the last three, four years as your own business, right? And oh, so yeah. giving back to the detailing community and understanding that you can be the best technician and nobody's taking your talent away, but if you don't know anything about running a business or building teams it doesn't matter how much talent you have yeah and the crazy thing is you could be mediocre at your talent and run a great business and absolutely kill it but it doesn't work the opposite way yeah and i think some of the other things that we could talk or touch on today is you know i say relationships are the new currency oh right yeah oh yeah okay. that's so i'm gonna drop a bunch of bombs today okay for you yeah. guys but relationships are the new currency, right? And so what we don't understand is relationships are resources and resources is leverage and leverage is scalability. And I oh, hope yeah. you guys are writing this down in your audience because this kind of training that we're gonna talk about briefly today is something that I've spent hundreds of thousands of dollars getting proximity to the best masterminds in the business world, right? And so I reinvested the money I made in my business, I reinvested back into creating new skill sets so that I could actually scale because people have knowledge that I have. Just like when people go to your training, Justin, or they come to my training for the hands-on, they're trying to acquire certain skill sets so they can raise their standard and get more money, correct? Right? Yeah. And so if you want a coach or a mentor, you need to go find somebody. It doesn't have to be in the detailing space, but in the business world, they can actually teach you what those skill sets are because they know from experience how to get those results. Now, with you in, in the beginning of building Glossit, where did that epiphany happen for you with what you just said? Like, where did you start seeing this as a, as, as a whole in our market to be like, I got to, I got to provide a solution for this. This has to become part of our curriculum. Where was that? Where did that happen at? Would you say, or what caused that? Yeah, okay. This is a really cool story. I did, uh, if you're familiar with YouTube videos, I did a story that went viral on Dan Wiki and it was called the Peterbilt story. And this is where I decided that I need to start training people and scale. And this is a great story. I don't know if you saw the video, but um, this is one afternoon in 97. I get a phone call 430 in the afternoon from the Rolls Royce dealership saying, hey, you know, you're the best guy on black cars in town. And we've got a, 
Peterbilt and uh, trucks out of Denton, Texas here at the Bellagio. And they got a truck show and they asked us to borrow one of our buff guys and we referred him to you. So they're going to be calling you in the next half an hour. So they called me up and they said, hey, can you come down to the Bellagio? And I go down to the Bellagio and inside the ballrooms, I don't know how they did it, Justin, but they got four semis, right, in the ballroom. And they had to flatten the tires and they were up on a stage. And I don't know how they did this. I walk in. That's Vegas for you. Magic just happens. <laughs> there's like Copperfield, right? So I walk in and there's no, there's no lights on, right? And there's four semis and it's the new modular truck they came out with instead of the 357 box trucks it was like more car like right and so the general manager uh who runs this event for peterbilt says to me i'm going to turn the lights on these trucks i want you to take a look at them so he turns the lights on and i swear to god it looks like somebody took like a a, a brush and a bunch of sand or rocks got caught in it and they washed four trucks and they were completely scratched all of them and the guy looks at me and says, is this something that you can fix? And I said, yes, but I need about a week. And he said, you got till tomorrow morning. I'm like, brother, it's five o'clock in the evening. Oh. And I said, this is really almost impossible. And I said, I would need an army to do this. He says, give me a number. Give me a number. And I said, 25 grand thinking that he would say, you're crazy, just get out of here. He said, he looked at me and laughed and said, you better get started. <laughs> <Right? laughs> How did you feel on the inside? Like, oh shit. <laughs> I had a feeling of anxiety and stress because I was not expecting that outcome of that conversation. So I literally went back to my shop. And at that time, I think we had like six guys, but I needed another five or six guys. So I called four of the mobile detail guys I knew in Vegas. And said, I will pay you a thousand dollars for your time tonight, cash in the morning, if you can help me out with this, right? Plus my guys. So we yeah, had this yeah. army of people. And so basically what I did is we got there about seven o'clock at night. They gave us scaffolding and ladders and all this stuff to get up. Oh, nice. And so I said, so I said, you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a pattern product combination and figure out how we can make these trucks look good enough for the, the show because. This show was the international Peterbilt truck show for the whole world. So they were having all these dealers come in and how to make them, make them look good enough to be on the stage with the lights. Yeah. So I got up on the stage and I did um, a pattern product combination. At this time, I was developing my first cutting polish that would self-diminish. And I was working with Alcoa, the largest manufacturer of aluminum oxide in the world, right? And it was a sulfuric self-diminishing abrasive, which is now today called uh, one, uh, it's called McGuire's 101 and 201. That was me. And I had developed that with Alcoa on these trucks and it, it worked. We basically one step these trucks and they look like glass. And that's another story in itself. But I lost the technology because I didn't have enough money to buy the rights. And so McGuire's came in and they bought it and they got it. And it's called soft gel, uh, self, uh, or self diminishing abrasive, right? So we used it on the trucks and we finished at like 5.30 in the morning and the trucks looked like glass. I still have pictures of the trucks. Um, and I got in the back of the cab in one of the trucks because I wanted to get paid and I took a nap and at 7.30, they're banging on the window. What are you doing in the truck? And I said, I'm, I need to get paid. And they looked at the trucks and they said, these trucks look like they're painted. What did you do? And I said, you asked me to make them look good. He said, yeah, but this doesn't look good. This looks like fresh paint, right? And so they said, give us about 20 minutes. We'll be back. They went to the cages. They got 25,000 cash, put it in a small bag, and then handed it to me and said, the president of Peterbilt would like to have a conversation with you. Here you are just waking up like, oh, I need my coffee. I'm tired. I just took I'm a tired. nap. My yeah, arms are tired like, from all this polishing. Yeah, but my adrenaline's <laughs> kind of going because I'm like, why does the president of Peterbilt want to talk to me? I have no clue what's going on here, but he wants to talk to me. And he comes over to me and says, I just want to say thank you so much because we have millions and millions of dollars riding on the show. And without you, this wouldn't have been possible. In fact, I want you in Denton, Texas in two weeks. You're going to get with my assistant and you are now our personal consultant. You're going to fly to Denton, Texas. And I'm going to pay you whatever you want to get paid per hour. And I want you to train the guys on the line how to do what you did so we never end up here again. Deal? And two weeks later, I flew to Denton, Texas. 
I spent a week in the factory. They paid me very well. And I went on for two years as a personal consultant for Peterbilt Trucks as a consultant. And so I called my father, like, dude, you can't believe I got paid this much. And my dad taught me the coolest thing ever. He said to me, now you know the difference of getting paid not for what you do, but for what you know. You now understand. You've got value. Now sell that value. And I think that's what a lot of the professionals do in our industry. They undervalue their worth. Yeah, I like that. Right? I like that. They undervalue their worth. And until they're put in a position where they know what their value is, will they then ask to get paid for not what they do, but what they know? And so one of the books, and I'll finish the end of this year, I've been writing it for three years, it's called The Millionaire Detailer, right? And it's 21 chapters, but the story I just told you is a chapter. And the name of the chapter is, do you get paid for what you do or what you know? And that's the name of the chapter of the story I just told you. And at the end of the chapter, there's a series of 10 questions to say, how does this um, align with your life currently? And then I ask specific questions so that you get a lesson from the story that you can apply to your life. So this book is available? It will be at the end of the year. Yeah, the end of the year. This is share. something you're working on as we speak. Yeah, because it's basically just stories of all these different experiences and relationships. I mean, imagine you've been to Vegas, we see each other at SEMA, yeah. and the craziest things happen in Vegas since I've been here, and I have amazing stories that I want to share with people. So I got on YouTube with Van Wiggy last year, and I did the La Ferrari story with Steve Wynn and the yeah. La Ferrari and me and the Mafia, right? And uh, basically told that story, and it went crazy viral. And so now we're a sponsor of Van Wiki, but I'm going back in two weeks to tell more stories because Ed said, that story that you told on Van Wiki last year, I did 400 videos. It was number one. It beat El Chapo in views, right? Because yeah. remember, remember, when we work with customers, we build relationships. And that's why I say relationships are the new currency, right? So your relationships is your cheapest marketing because these are affiliates or soldiers on the ground that can help spread the word of what you do and how you're different, right? But you must be the expert to be that. Right. And so when, when I go through sales training and overcoming objections, I always want to look at what your mindset is going into the conversation, what your confidence is going into the conversation and your knowledge of explaining to the customer what they need, but why they need it. So they understand what their options are so that you can justify what your cost, not price. Right. Because a lot of people shop price and that means that's not your customer. That means that customer is just looking for the cheap his job he's not looking for the best job so you got to ask customers are you looking for the best price or are you looking for the best cost yeah and it doesn't hurt to ask questions because sometimes you might be able to bring them out of that mindset right they may not know what they're yeah. looking for they may just judge it off of price thinking that has to do with the job or the quality or the time whatever it may be whatever they previous experience or no experience they're coming to asking you about what you offer and i and that that could make or break if you don't ask questions right Right. And you, but it's not just questions. It's asking the right questions. Do you keep the car outside? Do you drive the car on highways? How many miles do you put on the car? Are you right? And so yeah. basically th these are important questions so that, you know, Hey, here's option A, B, and C, yeah. but make sure that you set a clear expectation for A, B, and C with a clear cost for A, B, and C. Cause if you don't, they will build their own story of what the outcome should be. Hey, I spent 500 bucks. You should have done X. Well, that's your fault if you didn't set that expectation in the beginning of the conversation before you started the job. That has a lot to do with basically that comes down to profiling, not only the vehicle, but the customer and making sure that you find the right fit of services for them to not only meet, but hopefully exceed their expectations. Yeah. And, and the thing is, is about, you know, over delivering and under promising. Right. And Thank so you. that therefore, you know, that's really important to to get more reviews and for that to generate more social proof and leverage. Right. And, and the other thing that I, we've been doing is, you know, see our YouTube channel starting to grow. It's called the Weekly Buff, where I take a customer in a car every week and I showcase the process and then the customer's reaction at the end. And then that way, when we're using our CRM, which is high level, um, it's our lead generation system. We have templates set up with links to specific vehicles that we then kick back to the customer. Oh, you got a Tesla? Let me send you three videos of three Tesla cars we just completed. And see, yeah. these are things that guys don't think about, right? If you create content, that's leverage to build value 
to get the job sold. Yeah. Right? And that, you know, that, and then there's that first time experience, right? With the, the technician, the detail or the business owner, you know, your, the appearance, yep. the appearance of both themselves, the shop, the setting, and then going down to where once you go through that process of what we call the consultation, being able to present those tools, your marketing tools, you know, I've always like had a screen above me where I could show them that same exact year making model vehicle, probably the same color to show them what the before and after look like. So they have something to go off of and it helps So that all those things to your point, definitely add up to help with the overall experience that the customer is getting. So as you're building that experience, you're building trust and overall you're building the relationship. Right. And so, you know, a lot of people don't know the difference between good, better, and best unless you show them. Yep. They have no benchmark in which to judge. So they had a guy working on the car before, and in his mind, it was good. But then you showed him what better was. So now his level of standard did what? It elevated. It changed. Right? And so setting clear standards is really important. And I think, you know, one of the things that we do in training is having SOPs, standard operating procedures, systems and processes. Right. And then onboarding your team and educating them properly, not just throwing them in the job and saying, well, you're getting paid X, you should know X. That's just setting yourself up for like high turnover in your staff. Right. And so these are other business things that we have. It's called glossyuniversity.com that we go through. And then we work with Brad Lee, dropping bombs from the top business deal as Lightspeed. So we created a platform so that you could actually train your teams internally through modules. Right. And then there's questions per module. And if you don't answer the questions, right, you got to repeat the module. Right. And so basically it has a report card. So if you have your team on our platform and they go through the training and they're like, yeah, I watched all the videos. I already know that last night. And then you log in and you look at the report card. Dude, you watch one video for three minutes. That's awesome. Right. That's how it should be. That helps elevate the whole, you know, your business, the industry as a whole and gets everybody on level playing field of professionalism like we have one called the overcoming objections is interactive right and and so basically it's um i need to talk to my wife i need to get a few more quotes it's a little bit more that i wanted to spend okay so then i do five different replies to overcoming those objections so that you can practice and i actually have role playing that we're adding right now so that you can role play with your spouse or a friend and then i teach you how to role play back and forth so that you have more deposits, which means you have more jobs in the shop, yep. right? And so this virtual training is invaluable because if you're trying to operate different parts as a business owner, you need somebody that can help you onboard. And if you have a virtual assistant, now it's not an end all be all, right? But it's Correct. also yeah. good content for them to watch. So when they get stuck, they go back to the module, they rewatch it. And last year you saw our booth at SEMA, we had a lot of installers that were talking about the training and how it changed their whole business, like Marcy and Alex, right? From uh, Clean Car in, in Denton, yep. Texas, right? Yep. Uh, Brenton, Texas. Um, and we changed them and we doubled their numbers, right? And it wasn't because they didn't know what they were doing. It wasn't because they didn't have good people. It was because their mindset needed to be shifted, their confidence needed to be shifted, and they needed to add some new skill sets in order to grow their business, right? And so, for us as a brand, you notice that this conversation, we're not talking about my coatings, we're not talking about my buffers, we're not talking about my polishes, we're talking about the stuff that what? Moves the needle, right? Yep. And this is what we need more of in the industry, right? And which is you're doing, and you're doing a great job helping people, educating them on who must I become to have what I want in my business? Because a lot of people don't even know what that looks like. They're like, what no. do you mean? Yeah. Right? I just got to stay here and make paint look pretty. No, 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 no. And so basically what you're doing is you're owning a job. You don't own a business. Right. And the difference is if you have a business like right now, I'm not in Vegas and I have a good team. So I have to delegate and trust my team. I have to define each team member's role and what the responsibilities are and then have them accountable for what I need them every week in team, you know, weekly meetings. Like you probably do with your teams, right? You probably Absolutely. have a Monday meeting and then you have an end of the week conversation. Then you probably have a quick 15 minute every day. What's every morning. Yeah. What's every morning. Right. And so 
it's our responsibility as the elders in the detailing community to help these young guys show them what it looks like to build a business, not just a detail business, yeah. not just a in business or a wrap business, right? I'm in a shop right now that I showed you before we jumped on the call. This shop does about $6 million a year in gross revenue. And I've been friends with this guy who started as one guy, Sharif Khan, right? Over 15 years ago, working out of somebody else's shop, just himself. And today he's got two shifts and 20 people. That's awesome. That right? right there, and I watched that. him. I watched him grow and I'm proud of him. He's one of my best friends. And so I'm actually here because he's got his sales team that needs training. Right. And so I'm setting up a new CRM, which is called high level. Um, so they can get their lead generation and their template straightened out. And then I'm going to walk and I'm going to sell deals this morning to their customers, put on their t-shirt. Right. And start going through leads for them. Right. That's training. Oh yeah. Right. Because when we go to these classes, Justin, the, you know, you can go to a class and become paint correction proficient or learn how to use a high speed versus a dual action, right? That's great. Those are fundamentals, the foundation. But if you don't know how to market or you don't know how to sell, those things are relevant. Yep. Because I see guys that obviously, and you see them too, where they're really, really good at their craft, but they can't market themselves. They can't sell. They're introverts because they haven't learned how to come outside the box to talk to people. And when they do, they they devalue themselves because they let the customer dictate the price versus knowing the value of what they bring to the table and just stay sticking their grounds. And that all ends up being a, a massive fail. Do they produce a good job? Yeah. But they do a 10 hour job for two, 300 bucks. Right. And so what they're doing is they don't know their value. Right. And so what I like to do is take a guy like that and then work on why, why are you doing this? Where, do you believe that this is not true? Well, the guy down the street, he's charging five hundred dollars to do a coating, so I got to charge two hundred dollars to do a coating. I'm using a hypothetical. <laughs> Boom, right? Yeah. So, so basically, I asked the question, dude, what's your what's your operating expense? What's your labor? What's your workman's comp and payroll? Huh? Time? Huh? I don't have any of that. <laughs> so, what are you going to do when the county walks in and shuts you down? Right. And so you obviously don't know your value. And I went through that with Marcy and Alex when they told me, when I met them, um, I said, how many coders do you guys do in a month? I met them at um, Mobile Tech. And I did a free consultation for 30 minutes just to give them some free coaching. And they ended up signing up. And then she came, he came, they sent one of their employees. But Alex was the hardest one to train. And he was the first one. And you know Alex, right? Because you've worked with both these guys. And his confidence was like way down here, right? And his average job was like three, 300 bucks. And then when I told him that he's going to start getting $1,800 to $2,500 a job, he looked at me like, that's, that's not, a, that's not ever going to happen. I said, the first step is you got to believe that it's possible. Number two is you got to say, how am I going to do this? Number three, who's my audience and how am I going to sell this service? That's the other side of it, right? People will push for that, but they'll push to the wrong audience. So again, all those other parts that fit the puzzle but they're not pushing to the right audience. No, because what they're doing is they're attracting a low value customer. They're not attracting a high value customer. Folks, it's really not hard. The same amount of energy that you're gonna take to sell the $300 job and the $2,000 job is identical. And when I showed the live training, because when I do training, Justin, and I'm sure you do too, I do with real customers when we train. I let them meet my customers, my cold leads coming through the door, my estimates coming through the door, and I show them the sales process. I get the deposit. I get the keys so they know what's real. Like, yeah. I'm not bullshitting you. Yeah. And then when Alex and Marcy saw I was getting 4000 5000 6000 a car, their brains were like, holy cow, I can't believe you're doing this. And so, it's just smooth as can be. No resistance. And if there no, is then you're able to figure out what it is that helps with not having that resistance or giving other options to help still close the deal in some way that keeps the customer happy and meets their expectations. Right. So you always have to find out everybody. Here's one thing I'm going to teach in, in the sales. And here's a nugget. Everybody's got a number. Why are you afraid to ask what your number is? So I'll give you one objection to the audience today. That's it's free. Guy comes in, wants a coding and a correction, right? 
I pitch him $3,000. He said, that's ridiculous. That's way outside of what my budget is. I said, okay, so give me a number. I don't want to like offend you. You're not going to offend me. This is business. That's another thing. Never be emotional when you do business. Be the business factual. has no emotions. I've been saying no. that for years. Right. Be factual. So the guy says, I got a thousand dollars to spend. And I said, you know what? I got good news for her. He goes, what? I said, we're more, almost halfway there. And then he starts chuckling. He goes, you're good. And I said, well, let's come to a number that we can both be happy with, right? Because if I charge you, would you trust me more? If I charge you less, would you trust me more? And then boom, the guy sees it. How hard was that? And then I am closing the job for 2,500 bucks, right? But there's a condition. If I do it for the 2,500 and provided that I execute your expectations, I'm gonna to wanna to review and I'm gonna do a quick video with your car letting people know what your experience, are you down with that? Now I'm leveraging that discount to monetize through social media to show other people of why people love our work. Yeah, and then that's organic marketing that didn't cost you a dime. There you go, non-paid traffic. <laughs> right? See, that's the kind of stuff that people really, really have to pay attention to now. Some may have stumbled across this just in their hard work and efforts of repetitiveness of dealing with customers all the time. Maybe they have a high traffic city or metropolitan area that they have their shop in. Others, this is the kind of stuff that is going to make or break your business and help building you up and be more successful. And this is huge. Right. Because what happens is it's, you know, I always in my video series, and I'll give you access to it, Justin, after this call. So you can check out the university, the online training is... You know, when I call my installers randomly and they don't know I'm calling them, the first question I ask them is, what's your numbers today? And they panic. I, I, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? If you don't have a whiteboard, you know, like corporate, we have whiteboards in all of our offices. So everybody has data, right, and numbers so that we know if we need to course correct or we're off somewhere and what we're doing in our marketing, our ads, right? Our sales teams are needing support. We got to know what the numbers are. If you don't know what your numbers are a day, what your break even is, or what you're grossing, how do you know if you have the money to reinvest? And so one of the things I think in the detail community, if I give you guys advice, a younger version of myself going back, I would say take 40% for two years with discipline consistently every single month out of your net profit, not your gross, and reinvest it back into scaling your business. And if you can do this, which I call dollar, you know, dollar cost averaging, like buying crypto or stocks, and you can do it like discipline for two years, you're going to be amazed after two years where your business will be. That's where a lot of people fail though, is they don't reinvest back into their business, much less reinvest back into themselves. A right. lot of times they end up basically buying the shiny objects, the new cars, the new toys, the new this, the new that, the jewelry, and like having all these things that don't mean nothing, no. nothing. And they do nothing for the business. And then they have all these things with no money in the account. And now Peter's robbing Paul because they're trying to figure out how they get from one week to another if it's a slow time of season. And it, it just becomes useless. You know, and then what they end up, they end up doing is they end up getting into the victim role, right? It's this, it's, it's the, 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 the people suck in this area or uh, these customers don't want to spend money. or So I asked, always ask a question when I started to hear that negative talk. I said, if we could build a story and it was to be the story you really want, what does that story look like? And they're like, what? I said, let's build it. Let's talk about what is your vision? And then I try to walk them through a process of if you could have what you wanted, right, in your business, can you write down? And I do this as an exercise when I'm training. So if I get a guy that comes into class, I'm sure you've had it too, because you get guys that come in with all these high expectations and you're going to do all the work, Justin, and you're going to make my business flourish. And you're like, dude, I got a reality check for you. It's, I, I'm not a savior. No. I'm here to help you and guide you, but not make it happen. That's a commitment that comes from you, not me. Yeah, I'll lead and you through the water, but you got to drink yourself. Right. <laughs> Zig Ziglar said, what did he say? I could give you a fish or feed you for the day, or I could teach you how to fish and feed you for life. Right. Yep. So I'm here to teach you how to do the process 
but it's up to you to show up every day and give a hundred percent. Even when you don't feel like it, you got to keep pushing, like we're working out in the gym. You know, you and I have been training in the gym for, for years. Right. And so when they look at us like, Dan, Justin, I wish I had guns like you, or I look like you I'm like, bro, where, where, where's your diet? Where's your consistency? Do you work out when you don't feel like working out? Do you push when you feel sick? Do you still go? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's like, and, that's just like what we do. You have your, you have your diet and then you have your physical workout. You have the craft and you have the business side. Those two things have to work in harmony to get, to get results. And then on top of all that, just like using the gym as an example, you have to push yourself to failure. If you don't push yourself to failure, then you're just going to get the same stupid results every day by going and just doing your treadmill, doing your couple sets, feeling good, and then going home and then repeating that and never seeing results. That's insanity. And then the second thing here too, and that's a good point, is embrace failure. Look at it as a gift, not it's ruining your life. It's yeah. happening Right. So people say, is this happening to me or for me? Right. Think about that. Right. So when I'm going through a circumstance and they're like, man, I got so many problems. And I'm like, if you don't create bigger problems, you're never going to grow. And yeah. they're like, what? what does that mean? That means that you just learn to embrace the storm and lean into it and run from it. It's just taking the idea of, of, of most people take the loss as 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 a loss and they're like oh my god and they get devastated but it's it's don't take the l for loss take the l for learning right you you have those things in life those trials and tribulations that make you a stronger person so you take them as a lesson to learn from so you could be better and not duplicate that whatever that scenario is that was a negative or a loss and turn it into something bigger fuel that that fire of passion and take that as the fuel to say so that way you could just drive through it Right. You know, you know, I have become good friends with a lot of leaders in the business world. Andy Forselli is a buddy of mine, First Farm, you know, Bradley, Ed Milet. These are some big names that I've gotten proximity to. And, you know, I've added value. So I talk about this. This is important. When you want to get close to somebody like you and I, because we have a lot of experience, don't just come asking us to do things for you. Bring value of what you have to offer for us to want to build a relationship with you. Right. Yeah. And, and, and because of our presence on social media and YouTube and things like this, people come at you like you owe them. I don't owe you anything, bro. Right. You, you know, when I went and build relationships with the people I'm talking about, I did so many cool things and never expected anything in return other than I want a relationship. with you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. It's one of those things. They don't see the journey. They just see where you are now. Right. Right. They don't see all the shit and the dirt and the problems and the grit that we had to put in to get where we're getting. And we're more than happy to help these younger guys in the business succeed and get the results we're looking for. But guys, you got to come to us with the right mindset. And that's where it starts. That's the first thing is that we're creating in our marketing and our training is what is required to build the proper mindset so that you can actually go into the game of training with us and get the best results. And be right. open-minded. So what if you've gone multiple other places? That's actually good because right. with detailing, we know that there's not just one way of doing it. You know, there's multiple combinations, oceans of products and machines and this and that to get to the end result. But it's taking that and learning if you are one to have the financial back and to go to these different trainings and, and to learn all this different stuff, take it and put it in your arsenal and create your own thumbprint of things that you do. But be open-minded well, about it. Think of it, it's like rapper or music artists. They all have music, they all sing, they all play instruments, but they all have their own style. Yes, and that's what makes them unique and successful. Right. So yeah. guys out there that are watching Justin and I, ask yourself a question today, and there's good things to write down in order to start this journey. Number one is, be clear about what you want. Right? And then number two would be, Explain why that's important in your life and that's a must, a non-negotiable, right? And number three is who must I become in myself to be the next version of what I want? Simple questions, but not simple to answer. And yeah. if you guys can write these things down, it will give you clarity to where your current reality in your business and yourself is in order to move forward, right? 
to get what you want. And all that white noise and distractions out there, and you guys know what I'm talking about with the naysayers and this is a scam and this is bullshit and this guy is this, because those people have their mind in the wrong place. And those are people that you don't want to associate with. No. Because all they're going to do is bring you down and not help you move forward. They're holding you back. And the best thing is to get rid of those distractions to move forward. There's people that are going to make you question your thoughts, your opinions, but there's people that make you question those thoughts or opinions. So you're a bit more calculated. That's the difference in the negative person and the positive person. The positive person will make you question those to make sure you're calculated. The negative person will make you question them to see every doubtful thing about the situation. And That's those- what we call an accountability partner, right? So, we all need an accountability. I don't care what level of business or who you are. Yep. You all need an accountability partner. Somebody that can give you an outside perspective that's not in agreement with your current perspective. Yes. Doesn't mean they're right. It just means that you're not looking at something because you're looking this way and you're not looking over here and they see over here, but you don't. And so all they're trying to do is open up new possibilities that maybe you're not paying attention to. Because remember, where we put our focus is where we get our results. Yeah. And the good thing about a great mentor is that even when they disagree with something and find out you're right, they'll still own the fact that they were wrong and they'll still congratulate you on you being right. Right. Because that's a humble person, right? True leaders lead by example and own their shit. Yeah. 100%. You know, and I think, uh, this has been a great you know, conversation and I hope this has helped other people kind of open their eyes and look at, we're not just in a detailing business, we're in a business, right? Yeah, that's exactly. That's exactly what I've in you and a lot of people have preached in for so long. And it's, I feel like sometimes on the masses, it falls on deaf ears because they're so, so into making sure that the paint is shining. You know what I mean? And I get it. And I get the hustle behind that. I get the mindset. I mean, we've all, come from that we've all had that same problem at some point in time but there's also a point in time where we listen to the right people where this or where our mindset is now where it just clicks so we're like oh it's not all about that because here's the thing and i hate to say this but the best detailers if they passed away tomorrow all their clients will be finding a brand new detailer give it a year or two yes they'll still speak very highly of them but they'll find somebody that they're happy with again because the craft you know, side of it is the commonality. It's the business side and the experience that makes a difference. Right. And that's 100% true. I think that people realize that we all can be replaced. And there's always going to be the new king of the mountain. Yeah. Right. You might yeah. be the king of the mountain today, but tomorrow you're no longer the king of the mountain. And so, you know, look at Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. I've read their books. I've listened to them on podcasts. And I'm a big fan. If you guys want to write this guy down, he's amazing. Tim Grover. Tim Grover was the personal coach, mental coach for Kobe Bryant for over eight years. I don't know if you know you guys know who that is. And I've got the pleasure of hanging out with Tim Grover at a mastermind for two days. Wow. Kick his brain. Wow. And it was, dude, it was crazy. The, the, the amount of knowledge this man and the stories and the things that he pushed Kobe to do, real stories, was fucking crazy. It was amazing. And so if I never invested $10,000 for two days, I didn't get free buffer. I didn't get polishes. I didn't get coatings, yeah. right? I just <laughs> Free buffet and just hanging out, shooting the shit, having a couple of drinks and cigars. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> that was the background noise. <laughs> right. Exactly. And so what happened is I opened up a new relationship with a new resource, which became my new currency. And now I have a personal relationship with Finn Grover because I was able to connect with him on a different level. And he was able to give me insight of how what he did in sports world was no different than what you do in the business world and how they're the same. It's the same. And he talked about, if you're not working harder or you're not grinding, you're not putting the time, somebody else is doing it and you're not, that's why they're the winner. There is no, there, there is no second or third. You're either first, he said, or you're fucking last. That's what made Kobe Bryant, Kobe Bryant. Yeah, he wanted to do, and he was committed to do it regardless of how it made him feel. So what happened? He let he controlled his feelings. His feelings did not control him. 
That's why and business so has look, no emotions. Because if you cut that out and you just drive yourself to do the things sometimes you don't want to do in business, of course, <laughs> that's going to make a difference in who you are and what you become. You're just going to have that grit, right? You got to have that, what I call the low gear, which means you got one gear. It doesn't matter how fast you go. You just go, right? And momentum is everything in business. The minute you stop, for example, when COVID happened, this is a great story. When COVID happened and my teams and I looked at, what are we going to do in the meeting? You know what I told them? We're going to double down. Well, shouldn't we just wait and see what happens? I said, fuck that, because that's what everybody else is doing. There is no wait. Yeah. And my business doubled two and a half in gross revenue in COVID. Now, I wanted to ask you, too, with your training aspect. Now, you're still a fully operating shop. Am I right? Correct. Correct. So that we still have the shop. My guys are operating. What I love, um, you know, what's funny is that it's it's a huge revenue. Like we're in, a, we're in, and I don't want to get super personal, but we're probably like yourselves. We're in the high seven figure gross revenue a year with an EBITDA of 30%. If you guys don't know what EBITDA is, this you're going to learn this, Google it, earning before taxes. And then that's what your company would evaluate plus assets, right? And then you would multiply that what the EBITDA would be. And so when you guys have a look at building a business, what is your exit strategy? I teach this in class, right? Here's where I'm at. This is where I want to be, right? And this is how I'm going to exit. You should already have that in mind when you start your business. What is your exit strategy, right? And what do you? what is your purpose after that? So I ask a lot of these questions and make people think, but the business, the studio is, we're, we're growing so much just from our ad spend. Um, our ad spend right now is between 16 and 25,000 a month just for the studio. Our average cost per acquisition, because we build our own ads, I have my own teams internally, I don't sub it out. Uh, I'm a video guy, I have my own media buyer, I have my own web con content. Um, this last week we have a Zoom meeting, our average cost per lead was $52.14, which is really low on Google yeah. and Facebook and Instagram, right? And let me tell you, explain something to you guys. When you guys run an ad, right, and I'm going to teach you guys how to run an effective ad if you want to get more high value customers. Right, write this down. There are three things to doing an ad on Facebook, Google, Instagram for a successful ad to convert to more leads. You got the hook, you got the story, you got the offer. Okay, if you're missing one of those three, your cost per acquisition would be $150, $200. And so, what I teach as part of my training is I show you different ads we created, ad sets, and then I show you how I built the ad. Right. And then what my offer was. And then I say, if you duplicate this, but you do it yourself. Right. And I give you my resource so you can do it. You should be in the 50 to $75 range. Now, who wouldn't spend 50 to $75 to get a two or three thousand dollar job? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now, and keep in mind, because people listening to this, this is great information. But some of this also has to do with geographic where your placement is and what kind of market you're dealing with. You know, not a big part of it, but some part of that still falls into place. So a lot of people may think, oh, if I do this, I'm going to just have people banging my door down. This might no, just take a little bit of time. So that's a great question. So let's talk about two things. I'm going to break them out. One is, doesn't matter if you're in a huge market with a huge audience or a smaller market with a smaller audience. The most important thing is consistency, guys. Consistency. Just because you've been posting on social for two days or a week or two weeks and you're not getting the likes or the comments do you think that's really relevant no it's not relevant what's relevant is that you're consistent in getting attention yes and, and so people don't understand that when you're posting on your instagram if you're not posting at least 20 times a day on your story because that's what people watch and now they're watching the youtube reels and yeah. this is a we can do a whole part two just on marketing where i could go through different plays with you guys in another podcast and I could give some crazy bombs, right? Of how I can change your business on a marketing end, like crazy, right? So go back to your question, geographically, great question. I would say that's not true. And I'm gonna tell you why it's not true geographically. It depends, it's relevant, right? Because yeah. you have to ask yourself a question, what is your target in revenue and sales? If you said, I wanna do a half million dollars and I'm in Brenton, Texas with Marcy and Alex, I would say that's not possible because you don't have a big enough audience to do a half million dollars. And so basically that demographic, because I studied it for them on the behalf of my team, can do 200 to 250 a month. 
in that little town, right? I know because I know the audience, right? So a lot of people are saying, well, how would I find that audience? Guys, go to glossyuniversity.com and you contact me through my training site and either myself or one of my team members will give you a direction to go find that information for free, okay? We'll help you guys try to figure that out. But um, getting back demographically, so like Marcy and Alex, clean card, they um, told me it wasn't possible because they got tractors and cows walking down the street that nobody's going to spend this kind of money. And you did an interview with them and you know that's not true. They're killing it now, right? Yep. And so, and they're in a little freaking town, right? And so they got people from San Antonio bringing their cars down. They got people from Austin bringing their cars now because of what I taught them on how to what? Build an audience how to yeah. promote, how to get attention, right? And so, guys, if you're not consistent, and Justin's smiling, grinning, because he knows. He I know. That's why so I brought that up, because it's like, I hear this all the time. Well, I can't do this because of that. And I'm in a small town, and it's like, no. <laughs> and it's not, it's not true. It just depends. It's relevant to what you want to try to grow some revenue. Then there is a capacity or bandwidth for that. Yes. Yes. But, yes. but here's the thing, man. For me, like if you if somebody comes to me and says, "Well, like I'm doing 15, I'm doing um, hold on one second, my phone's almost dead. If I'm doing 15 grand a month, is it hard for you and I to teach them to do 30? That's a piece of cake. If they come to us and say, "I want to go from 30 to 60, not a piece of cake, not difficult, but it's very some work. Possible, it's yeah. some work. If you say, "I want to go from 100 to 200." It's going to be some investment. And so that being said, one of the things I decided with my team the other day, because when I found myself doing, and you probably the same, that when you start to build a relationship with the people that you're training, you really, really want to help them succeed. You want them to yes. win, right? But what happens is they start calling you on Saturdays and Sundays on your cell phone, and they start asking you all these questions. And you're like, and you don't want to be rude, right? No. Because you're like, hey, I want to help you, but I do have a life. And yeah. so I built the monsters in my network with a few people. And then when I took the crack away from the crack baby, they turned on me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, there is, there's, there's personal life, personal time, wife, girlfriend, kids, whatever the scenario is that you just, you want that time with that. So obviously your burnout rate isn't going to happen or is less likely to happen, but yeah, you want to keep that separate. If people have kind of, don't have that boundary they're just like oh but he's so good at what he does yeah. and so what happened was i had to build healthy boundaries with my installers so one of the things that we spent the last three months because you learn as you grow right is i had my yes. attorney call up a contract between me and my students my installers that basically said here's our code of ethics this is what we will do this is what we won't do remember we talked about setting expectations with customers when we do work on their cars i wasn't doing that with my students. So of course my students were gonna build whatever story and expectation they wanted. And then if I didn't do it, they were gonna hold me hostage, right? So I said, you know what? I told my attorney, we're gonna have our own code of ethics with our trainees. And so they're clear about what's included, what we will do and what we won't do. The other thing I plan on doing is I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna test it, is I'm gonna do four students, okay? Per quarter, all right? And you're gonna get one-on-one -on -one with Rich Light and your business. I am gonna be you're a consultant, you get me 30 minutes a week and you get me for one hour at the end of the month and we're gonna do what's called the general's tent when I'm gonna gamify your business. I'm basically gonna take all your data, all your information, all your plays and what you're doing and I'm gonna organize it and I'm gonna structure it for you so that you will win if you're committed, okay? Yeah. If you're committed. And the, and the thing is that the code of ethics say, hey, if I have KPIs, you know what those are, key point indicators, right? I'm going to have KPIs for you every week. And based on the KPIs, if you're not doing your job, I'm out. I'm out because you're wasting my time and you're yep. wasting your time. And this is not a good relationship. Keeps it accountable. So it keeps them accountable. So where I'm going to do this, I'll keep you posted. I'm going to test it. And if you don't have enough skin in the game, and this is only going to be for certain people. So let's say you're a business that's doing 50 grand, like my guys at Auto Emmy in Chicago are doing 25, 30 grand. Nick and Carly are at 125,000 a month now after me working with them over the last year and a half. That's awesome. Right? right? And so what they told me was, you're giving away everything for free. Why are you not charging for this mentorship, Rich? This is crazy valuable. And so what I'm going to charge is 15 grand for 90 days with me. 
Now, if I don't get you back at least double that, which means 30,000 in revenue, because 15 isn't gonna, after cost of goods and labor, that's not profit. So I'm gonna do a 30. If I can't get you 30 back after 90 days in actual hard revenue or jobs, then I'll give your full money back. But if you didn't meet the KPIs, then you don't qualify. Yeah, no, that makes sense. And I, I love that because you know how it is. A lot of people talk about how they want to do it and they're going to do it, but you got to be accountable. You got to really put the work the, in. The people, my friends to me, I was with Sharif last night. He said, 15 is not too much, but not a little, but it's enough to put urgency that you got a real piece of skin in the game. Yeah. Right. And so we talked about reinvesting in yourself. If you want my time and you want me to take you from, from what would take you three or four years and I can show you how to do it in a year, is that not worth 15 grand? You know? I, totally. But are they ready for that? Exactly. So the question is, we have a questionnaire that we created in order to qualify you to be even an applicant because I'm not going to just take some random joke, right? No. I'm going to make you go through a series of questions like when we grow our teams and different positions and based on how you answer the questions, we'll let you know if I want to have a conversation with you that you even qualify for this mentorship. And that's, that's, I think some of the, the side of it. And I don't want to be negative saying this, but I don't feel that everybody that enters this industry is built for that level. No, I feel that there are a lot of amazing and great people, personalities, detailers at their craft, but I don't feel that a lot of people are built for that level of, business running and operating a shop by yourself and having one or two employees is one thing and those are different there's many different layers to this industry but getting up to a point where you're starting to hit those seven figure revenue margins and more there's there, there's very few shops that do that one and two a lot of them still even struggle but at the same time to be the real success of that there's the percentage becomes the one percent of the one percent so everybody's not built for that and there's it's not wrong to know that because just like other industries, not everybody's built to be the most successful of those industries either, but some people stumble upon it. Some people work their ass off for it and still don't make it. But a lot of it has to do with that, that inner person that you are too. There's something about the individual that helps push past the point of no return to make that happen. And that becomes the 1% of the 1%, which you'll never know if you have that in you, if you don't try. No. And the thing is you got to be okay to fail. You got to okay yeah. to lose, right? It doesn't mean you lose long term. It means right now, I'm gathering information. I'm getting my experience so that I can scale and grow to get what I want. And so, if you're not willing, and this is just an entrepreneur, this has nothing to do with detailing. No, Talk about yeah. the one percent or the one percent or the one percent, right? It doesn't matter what business you're in; it all applies. It's the same, okay? It's just a different product or a different service, but it's the same game, right? And so, here's the thing that drives me crazy with some people that get in this business. Where can you invest this little money if you bought a buffer and some material and coding and get this kind of return on investment, ROI? Yeah. Are you freaking kidding me? There's people and doctors that go out to go get an education and spend eight years in school and get a half million dollars in debt to make what you made in the first year of being in this business. Are you freaking joking me? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what blows my mind. And you know what it is? It's just... They take for granted their wins. Guys, every day, I want you to look at your set. So was today a win or was today a loss? And at the end of the month, I hope you had more wins and losses, but please keep track. Because when you look at you won more than you lost, your whole headspace is going to change on how you look at your business. Yeah. One of the biggest things that helped me was, you know, when you get turned down by a customer, when you're offering new services, especially like getting in early years into the coding game or any of that, or if you're just getting into business and offering codings or things of that nature that are higher price services in general, the no's, the more no's you get, the better. I love collecting no's. I love when people tell me, no, you know why? Because that's one step closer to a yes. So the more no's I get, I know the more I'm getting closer to a yes. And by the time I get to that yes, I'm going to start collecting a couple of yeses. Well, those, that category of yeses grows because as soon as you start proving your worth, your value and everything you bring to the table and why they said yes, that just is wildfire. And that right and there, there will put and you and the other thing too is knowing, is, is knowing how to stay in the deal. Yeah. So many times we walk away, but we, if we had just pushed a little bit more or asked another question, we could have closed it. 
right? And so we need to stay in the deal. Marcy and Alex had a hard time staying in the deal. And so I basically had to push them with real customers in Vegas in our facility to show you what staying in the deal looks like. And no, you still deal no, with the no. same type of customer that everybody else yeah. deals with, regardless of what your resume is in the industry. Some of these customers come in that don't know and or care about any of that. They come in and see us as your car washer, your detailer. What can you do for me? Right. But if you become the expert, they don't have a oh. perception. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to expose them to that. But it's still the perspective walking in the door is that they they don't know sometimes. Not all of them, but some of them you still get. Not that. all of them. If you're running good marketing and you're running good ad and you have good social proof, they've already been watching you for six months. They just didn't come in the door yet. And so when they come in the door and they're already a fan of yours, of what you do and how you do it, those are easy sells. You're talking about the people that don't watch social media. Correct. That don't, right. Yeah. They come in the door. And so I, I like. They drove by and saw a detail and said, I need to just stop in there one day and what, see what that's all about. You know, I have an idea. And I think we'll talk more about this. I think you and I should get together and do just a business boot camp. I'm game. And we can do it for three days with different speakers. You would be one. I would be one. Renny would be one. I got some guys in the PPF industry that are big that I would bring in and talk to different people in different industries. It doesn't mean that you're in detail. It could be in wraps. It could be in PPF. It could be in debt removal. But I think that we really need to do a business boot camp to help educate more of these guys. You know where I think a lot of that would be you know, really the most immediate and most beneficial is I'm seeing a hole in the market for our North American market is great. A lot of them thrive on it. We do get a lot of resistance because of the naysayers, but I think in some of the other communities, like uh, coming back from Puerto Rico this last weekend, or even in the Latino community in general, I think a lot of that could make a bigger splash and impact there because they're so passionate and so driven with this craft that that's what they need a lot of. And I think they would be more open ears in our own North American market. I think we would have more people that would be willing to listen. And that would make a huge impact. And of course, that complements everything that we're saying and doing. Yeah, yeah, no, it's true. I mean, my wife is Venezuelan. So of course, in the last three or four years, I've had to learn a lot of Spanish. And I have two really good um, guys that own the top body shops in St. Juan. And their sons are Jose and Jose, and their father, the brothers are named Jose and Jose. And uh, they want me to come to Puerto Rico to, to do a business camp for the automotive industry, body shops, detailers. I know the top distributor for the detail inside of it that would put us right in front of the right audience. I mean, from what I understand, when they do trainings down there, we're talking 50 to 100 students at once under one roof. Let's do it. Let's go to San Juan. Let's help these guys. Because you know what? They really, really are passionate. I got, I met these guys at SEMA a few years ago and they all, the whole family came to train with me, the whole family. And I've watched them grow and succeed in the last couple of years. And I'm, it, it, you know, that's everything. It's not just about money. It's about wow. helping people get the, the results, right? It's about contributing and giving back. And that builds a relationship that is a lifetime. Right. And, they, and they're never going to forget to, you know, loyalty in our business is very, very not common. It's not common at all. And I think we need to build more synergy for the positive of what we're doing than trying to bring people down. And yeah. I think you guys, the, the community needs to understand that, you know, if somebody's not doing something right or you don't agree with their post, that's fine. But if you don't have anything positive to say, don't put it on a public forum and belittle them. Yeah. Send a direct message and say, look, I know this might be coming from the wrong way, but I just want to let you know what my intention is. I think you could do this, this, and this. And if you're willing for some input, I'd love to help you. You know, please give me a call or let's chat, right? That's the a best better ones are the, of the indirect comments to where you know exactly what they mean, but the rest of the audience doesn't. And you know what they're trying to get across, but they're trying to do it in an inconspicuous way. And it's like, really? that that That's what you had to put on this where you got... 50 different positive things and then this one person where really nobody understands what he's trying to say but you do right. <laughs> it's like wow okay. yeah and, and then i think that that's something but i think the the port the, the lag community man like when we're you and i are in SEMA, i get so many people from south america and central america that are super passionate about this industry and we're like 20 years ahead of all these guys people don't understand this Right. They come to these shows because they want to get access to what we do currently They're now. So hungry and so willing to listen. Yeah, 100 percent. 
But uh, if you want, we can in the future, or maybe if Brown Seaman, we can do another podcast. I'd love to get into more of some of the marketing things that we're doing that I can give some free nuggets to these guys on how to build and build an audience, but the audience that attracts real high value customers. And what kind of ads do I put together to help that they can duplicate that I'm currently doing? Let me do this. Um, I don't remember if we've exchanged information or whatever, but let's do this. We're coming up on time for the podcast. So a couple do a couple of things I want to do because we've covered a lot of lot of great content. Um, one of the things is you know advice, and you've given a lot of advice. But is there something particular that you could just throw out there quickly that just kind of gives the viewers, whether it's a, a entry level detailer experience, they've been doing it for twenty years, twenty days, doesn't matter. Just something that could help them outside of what we've already covered, uh, and then we could uh, close out. And then once I get off the live feed, I could go into we could exchange some information and go from there. Sounds good. Okay, guys. So. The first thing is, guys, believe in yourself. There's a lot of negative people out there. And the reason they're negative and they tell you it's not possible is because they're too afraid to try. So when you make your mind up to do something, believe in it if that's what you want. And don't change it because somebody else has a negative comment. That's not going to happen. You crazy. Nobody's going to spend this kind of money. You know, you don't have enough money to start your own business. What are you doing? You know what? We live in America, the greatest place in the planet, and everything is possible, but you got to first believe it's possible, and you got to believe in yourself, right? And be honest, be real, be raw. This is important because if you can't be raw with yourself, how can you be raw with others? If you can't be real with yourself, how can you be real with others? If you can't be accountable, how can you expect people to be accountable? So guys, start with those basics and your life will change. And it won't change overnight. Remember, Justin and I said, consistency is the key to winning. Yeah, 100% agree, especially on the real part. That's something I've learned that you like me, you like me, don't you don't, that's okay. We move yeah. on. We can agree just, to disagree. <laughs> yeah, and that's okay. You know, like I've hung out with Andy Priscelli, you know, Andy, and uh, I might be going on his podcast this, this fall. We don't know, we'll see, we've been talking um, because he said he's passionate about detailing, Andy, and Andy has quite the collection of cars. And uh, he hit me up uh, last year when we were driven. It was an event, a mastermind, and he was there. And he was like, dude, I got this detail guy. He's in St. Louis. Dude, I cannot get through to him, and he is so fucking talented. Um, would you mind talking to him because you're in that industry and maybe give him a nudge for me because he could blow up. It just... He's not listening to me. Would you help him? And so I called him. And now he's, he's killing me, right? Because he needed another perspective that wasn't emotionally attached to him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And when An so outside many, voice. Yeah, the outside voice. And uh, so he needed that. You know, the other thing, guys, is, you know, after doing a lot of masterminding, investing in myself, and I continue to do it, I just signed up for another one in October before SEMA to get my mind in the right place, Right? Guys, be ready for the game. Every day you wake up, be grateful for what you are. You're breathing. You're walking. You're eating. You're already rich, and you don't know you're rich, right? So be grateful when you wake up and take 10 minutes to be thankful. I, you know, a lot of people don't know it, and I don't speak on it, but I do that to myself, for myself, especially when I do shows or I'm going on trips. I get up in the morning when I'm in that hotel, and I look myself in the mirror, and I talk to myself and tell myself what I'm going to do and nothing's going to get in my way. Now, what I, you know, that the depth of that conversation, I'll keep to myself, but it is sure. something that, you know, it's one of those things that I, I do that as well. It just gets my mind right. It gets my mind right for the day in a positive perspective. Yeah. And then always trust your inner voice. We all have an inner voice, but sometimes you choose not to listen to the inner voice, do we? So the inner voice is obviously your, your God, your religion, your spirituality, whatever you want to call it. Everybody's different. Yep. But that inner voice is usually on the money. And so the question is, block out the white noise and distractions and listen to your inner voice. Now, with all that said, what is the best way to get a hold of you and or just finding out about Flosset and products, training, and all the good stuff that you have to offer? So, guys, if you want to research us, we have a YouTube channel. Go to glossit.tv, glossit.tv. 
and there's a lot of content there. You'll see the weekly bus. So you can see how I build content to attract more high value customers. Every weekend we do a new video. Um, you can go to glossetuniversity.com. We're building a new site. This one's still active, but we're improving things that will be released here in September. But if you're interested, I only hold classes now in Vegas every other month. There are live classes. The virtual training you can sign up right away for. And what I always recommend, and I'm going to do it, Justin, is instead of just bringing people on their class because they're hungry and they want to go to a class, I'm going to make them go through the university online first before I allow them to come to a live class. And the reason is, is that I want them to have the basics and the fundamentals so that when they actually come to a live class, they can get the most out of it. They're not cold. That makes right? sense. Right? And so I want to onboard you through a process that is going to ensure the highest level of success that you're committed to doing this game. But I want to onboard. So we're going to do that. Here's the thing. Most of the guys that we did a deal where, and we're going to do it, this is the last month of September, where we give you the online platform for 90 days for free, right? For free, right? For 90 days with your tuition for the class. We were doing that. We're only going to do it one more time because team is coming, right? And so what that did is when I onboard you, you're already studying and making money with the online training before you even show up to class. So you've already paid for your class from getting on the platform. See how I'm trying to leverage that to you so that you win. You know what I mean? Nice. Um, sorry, my phone's going dead. But I'm trying to help you make money before you even show up. I'm trying to cover your costs. That's awesome. I like that setup. That's cool. See, that's the kind of thing that, you know, again, getting involved and taking your business to the next level. These are the type of leaders in the industry that you should connect with. There's many of them, and there's many positive ones. Rich is another one that just, he has his way of doing it, and there's many different ways of doing it. And it's just a matter of, you know, linking up to figure out what's going to be the best fit for you as an individual and how you want to grow. And it's another great resource. Rich has done a lot for the detail industry and he's put a lot forward and a lot of time invested on the personal end outside of the money. It's just his, his blood, sweat and tears into helping mold the industry where we're at, like others have as well. So Rich, thank you. Much appreciated. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for being on the Reflection Artist Live podcast. There you go, man. I, I hope to come back in the future and uh, contribute on the marketing side and actually do some content for an hour where I actually will do some slides in, in, a, in a Zoom call and these guys can screenshot and grab information and show them how to make some money. You know, I right like away. that. I like that. No, that's something we could definitely do. This is something that we continue to do, you know, basically to get back to the detail industry. We're not looking to be the podcast. It's the best of all podcasts. We're looking to be another you know, education resource and just, you know, backed by, yes, a manufacturer, but me leading it forward to help with all the relationships in the industry we built to help get everybody out there to talk about that, to help, to help, to your point, others grow and, and give back a little here and there to make sure that they, they get something out of it. So thank you. And we'll yeah. do something for sure. Um, yeah. So we're coming to an end, Rich, thanks. And on behalf of Buff and Shine, thank you. Um, again, this is Reflection Artist Live. This is episode number 71. So any of you that want to follow back up and listen to it, it is on our social media platforms. Also, um, it's on YouTube and all the podcast platforms as well as Reflection Artist Live. So I'm going to exit out. Um, stay on, Rich. I want to connect with you after we get off here. So everybody, thank you for listening and take care. Rich, thank you.